are listening to this, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ from Memorial Park Baptist Church. We are glad that you have joined in today and to worship with us in this new format that even as the coronavirus is sweeping over our country, we can continue to worship because after all, worship is not contained within a building, it is within the spirit of our hearts. There are a couple of announcements that I would like to make this morning before I get into the word. The first announcement, <clears throat> excuse me, is that we as the leadership committee have voted this week to continue to keep the church closed at least until after Easter. We will evaluate the situation at that point and we'll let you know if we will continue to be closed. But one of the ladies in our church had a great idea as I spoke with her this week. She suggested that no matter when we open up, whether it's the end of April or in May or whenever that might be, that that Sunday we should celebrate and have an Easter service. After all, the resurrection is timely for any time of the year. It doesn't have to be on a particular set date. So stay tuned. We will have an Easter service uh, when we are able to come back in and worship as a congregation as a whole. The second announcement I would like to make is to remind you that our prayer chain is an active prayer chain. It is a telephone prayer chain so that if you have a need or a concern or even a praise, it's always nice to hear praises in times like this. And so if you have a need or a praise, please call our prayer chain coordinator and let her know so that she can pass it on down the line to everybody that's on the prayer chain. And if by chance you are listening to this and you are not a member of our church, you may send your prayer concerns in through, through our website and we will get them. And we'll, I can assure you, we'll pray for you and your needs. Last week we began a sermon series on Psalm 23. And I would like to start this morning by reading that psalm again to you. Hopefully as... Uh, we read it each week that maybe by the end of the sermon series, you will have it memorized in your mind. This is a great psalm of comfort, especially in a time like this. Hear God's word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a great psalm. This psalm contains so many promises that are applicable to us today as we are facing a crisis that we have never faced before. Not only ourselves, but everyone around the world is in the same boat. And so I'm here today to let you know that God is here to comfort and that he does care. Listen to the promises that he makes just in these few short verses. Last week, we took a look at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. It told us that Jesus wants to be our shepherd. In fact, he wants to be our shepherd so much so that he went to the cross to die for us so that he could be our shepherd. And not only does he want to be our shepherd, but what does a shepherd do? A shepherd takes care of the needs of the flock. And he is here to provide for our needs, not our wants, but for our needs. Our needs to be loved, our needs to be valued, our needs to know that we have a purpose in life. The shepherd gives us all of those things, but he gives us even more. Let's look today at verse number two. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me. Makes a very strong word. You know, parents make their children brush their teeth, or parents make their children to do their homework. Why do they make them do that? Is that harsh punishment? Is that something that because they don't love their children? It's absolutely the opposite. It is because they love their children. They want to have their children avoid the 
dentist visit for a cavity that may be very uncomfortable for them to go through. They want to make sure that they do well in school. That's why they make them. And you know what? The shepherd today, I'm sure looking at our lifestyle in the United States, where we are busy, 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 running here, running there, doing this, doing that, and we barely have time to think. He knows that's not good for us. We need, he's making us right now in this crisis to lie down in the green pastures because we need the rest. We need to be quiet and be still before God. And honestly, a lot of us have not been doing that. Do you remember the commandment that we are to keep the Sabbath holy? Let's be honest. How many of us really do that every Sunday? I mean, we may come to church and we may worship him, and that's so important to be able to worship him, whether you're at home or whether you're here to be able to worship him. But that commandment goes on to talk about that we are not to do work that day. How many of us try to slide in things that we were not able to get done during the first six days of the week, and so we take part of the seventh to do the laundry, run the vacuum, go to the supermarket. Maybe if we brought work home, we opened it up and did a few hours of work. That's not what the Sabbath is supposed to be about. And if we work, 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 and never take any rest, guess what's going to happen to us? We're going to burn out. And so the shepherd, knowing that, he wants what's best for us. He wants to make us take time to rest. When you read the words, he makes us to lie down. What does lie down mean? It means to rest. I don't know about you, but I don't sleep standing up. When I lie down, I go to sleep. A lot of us, I was talking to a gentleman from our church today, and we were laughing because we were saying, well, it's like we're all in kindergarten now. After we have our lunch, many of us lay down to take a nap because we're resting. We need to rest. And so the shepherd wants to take care of us and make sure that we do rest. And where is he putting us? He's putting us, he's reminding us that he wants to lie us down in a green pasture. Green, which symbolizes being alive. Green grass, which symbolizes something that he's created. We don't see burnt grass. We don't see bare ground. He's saying he makes us lay down in green pastures. He wants to remind us that he is the God of creation. That if he's had the power to create all of this, guess what? He can take care of us and our needs. But moving on then from, he leads, he makes me lie down in green pastures. What's the very next verse? He leads me beside quiet waters. Another very restful scene. We can close our eyes and think about what it must be like to be led and to watch some quiet waters, perhaps sitting by a lake or coming across a small stream in the woods. And it's quiet all around us. The hustle and bustle of life is not anywhere near. I like to hear, I like to think about the words lead. Like leader. Who is a leader? Who would lead us into the quiet waters? Well, of course, the shepherd would lead us. But a leader, what is a leader? A leader is somebody who comes forward, who has expertise, who has knowledge, who has the, the fortitude to come and say, I know how to handle the situation. The shepherd is saying to us, let me be your leader. You know, he could have said, Jesus could have said to the father, when the father brought up the idea of Jesus coming down to earth to be a sacrifice for us so that we might be able to come before the holy God. Jesus might have said, are you crazy, dad? There's no way I'm going down there. Have you looked at those people? They don't care about you. They don't care about me. They use our name in vain. They use it in cursing whenever they hurt themselves or, or want to make a point with somebody. They feel like it gives them more strength to take our name in vain. They, they don't care about us. When was the last time we heard from any of them? A lot of them even say that we don't even exist. Why would I go down there to give my life for them? And yet Jesus did. And you know what? because he had the same love for us as his father did. When he went to the cross, 
He could have called that thousand angels down and removed him from that cross and saying, I can't do it anymore. But he didn't. And you know why? Because we were on his mind. He wants to lead us beside the still water, beside the quiet waters. I want to read to you a passage from Matthew 11, 23, or 28, excuse me. Matthew 11, 28 says these words. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Are you weary and burdened today? I bet you are. We all are. Whenever we turn on the TV and hear the latest news, it just is getting worse and worse and worse. We are weary already of what the coronavirus has done to our lives. It has upset our world. And so Jesus is saying, come to me right now in this crisis. Come to me who you are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now you might ask yourself, well, that's good for him to say, hey, he's the son of God. What did he really feel? <clears throat> well, let's turn to another passage of scripture. Let's turn to Hebrews <clears throat> chapter four. And let's see what that has to say. Hebrews chapter four <clears throat> says, if I can find it here, It's in verse 15 and 16. And it says this, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's the shepherd who wants to lead us beside the still waters. He understands what it feels like to be frightened. He understands what it feels like when people all around him are anxious because he experienced that when he walked during his earthly life here on earth. So he wants to lead us beside the still waters. And then verse three begins with, he wants to restore our souls. When do we need to be restored? Something that needs to be restored has been damaged. Something that needs to be restored maybe has been, been used for so long that it no longer looks and has the beauty that it once was. Maybe something happened to it. Maybe it's cracked or the paint is peeling. Jesus is saying, I, as the shepherd, want to restore your soul. We all have faced trying things in life. We all have been damaged by sin, by people who've hurt us, by things such as making bad decisions. You know, I don't know that anyone regrets uh, working all of their lives on their deathbed. Most people, when they are dying, what they regret the most is not spending time with their family. To realize that your children were born and before you knew it, they were grown up and they spent so little time with them because they were so busy. Jesus is saying, let me restore your soul. We all have regrets, but let me take them. One of my all time favorite verses, and I probably say this every other Sunday to my congregation, is 1 John 1, 9. For he, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins. And not only forgive us of our sins, that alone is amazing, but not only will he forgive us of our sins, but he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is an amazing promise. You know, but my all time favorite in this song is the next part. And that part says, you know, he will guide us in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. It's really good to have a guide if you're in a dark cave, isn't it? Who knows what he's doing or she's doing and knows how to maneuver us through that cave adventure. Or it's really good to have a guide to take us through the deep, dark forest to be able to guide us back out again so we don't get lost for a few days or 
maybe even forever. A guide is very important. And Jesus has promised to be our guide in this life. We don't know what's around the corner. We never do. We don't know how this coronavirus pandemic is going to end. But guess what? God does. And he's saying to us, let me be your guide. Don't focus on the virus. Look at me. Focus on me. And let me lead you through this. You know, it says, and he will guide us in the path of righteousness. How do we know what the path of righteousness is? By reading this book. He did not leave us here as orphans. He did not leave us here with nothing to just wander around and try to find our own way. He gave us directions on how to live a righteous life that is not only pleasing to him, that will also prevent us from stumbling and suffering things because of poor judgment or bad decisions. You know, the Bible is just as apropos today as it ever was when it was written. Somebody sent me um, a text message yesterday, and I want to read it to you. You know, I want you to right now open your Bibles, if you haven't opened them already, to Psalm 23. I want you to flip over to the New Testament, and I want you to find 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I want you to follow along in your Bible as I read this updated version of a translation of that passage. Listen to this. But know this, that in the last days, critical times hard to deal with will be here. For men will be hoarders of toilet paper, lovers of bleach, panic shopping, scared, disobedient to the CDC, sneezing and having no face mask, having hand sanitizer and not open to any sharing, slathers of soap without self-control, self-quarantine without love of good hygiene, wrongful eaters and puffed up with indigestion, <laughs> lovers of cable TV rather than lovers of God, having an appearance of social distancing but proving false to its power, and from these turn away for at least six feet. Isn't that great? Scripture is always timely for whatever generation is reading it. And it certainly is timely for us today. This is something that we can trust, that will guide us in the path of righteousness. God is just so amazing. You know, parents often lament about when their firstborn is born that they wish that there had, the baby had come with a guidebook because the baby is screaming and crying and they've changed the diaper and they've tried to feed the baby, but the baby is still crying and they don't know what to do. And they said, only if we had a direction on, to know what this particular cry means. Or, you know, they get the second child and they've managed to get through the first child with the, the infancy and now the second child comes and he's so different from the first child that what they did with the first child doesn't work with the second child. And they would love to have a guidebook. Well, our shepherd has provided us with a guidebook. What we need to be doing today in the middle of the coronavirus is two things. We need to be praying. We need to be praying for our neighbors. We need to be praying for those who have gotten the coronavirus. And we really need to be praying for our healthcare workers who are on the front line. And then we also need to, I have to be honest, I have limited myself now to listening to the news only 15 minutes a day. And after I listen to the news, that's when I have my devotional time. Because I want my focus to be on God. I want my focus to know that he is in control, he is in charge, and there are just so many positive statements in here, such as we find in Psalm 23. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. I have a shepherd that leads me through this. He's going to take care of all my needs. He's going to make me lie down in green pastures and give me rest. He's going to lead me. He's going to be my leader. You know, just a few short weeks ago, it seems like an eternity for now, but just a few short weeks ago, our team returned from Puerto Rico. And while we were in Puerto Rico, what we did was roofing. Now, most of us didn't know anything about roofing. 
but a foreman, a leader was assigned to us to show us how to do the roofing. And he was there and he worked alongside of us to make sure that we were doing it right. That's what the shepherd wants to do with us. He wants to lead us beside quiet waters, still waters. He doesn't want us to be anxious. You know, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast your anxieties upon me for I care for you. That is assurance that we get from God's word. You know, and then he wants to restore our soul. He wants to take the things that have damaged us in the lives that we have lived up to this point, and he wants to make us new creatures again. You know, he gives us a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. He gives us as many chances as we need to get it right, because he wants to restore us. And then he guides us in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Whose kids are we? We are God's kids. You know, when we look at people's uh, families and we look at their kids, don't we sometimes think about, you know, man, that's not a very good reflection on their mom and dad. Maybe their mom and dad is not disciplining them enough. Or what's wrong with their mom and dad that they don't have these kids under control? You know, that's what the world is saying about us. We are God's kids. They know that. And so when they look at us, are they seeing us walking? in the path of righteousness, or are they seeing something else? You know, God, our shepherd, Jesus, our shepherd, is telling us today, let me, let me, rest in me, do not worry. If you are weary and heavy burdened, come to me, and I will give you rest. That is the shepherd that we have. Isn't he amazing? Today, we need to be thankful and filled with joy for what he has done for us and what he is going to do for us as his children. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for sending us Jesus. We do thank you that he is our Lord and Savior. He is our shepherd. We are not going through this coronavirus alone that he is walking with us every step of the way, guiding us, telling us what we need to do. You know, James 4, 8, we know we have to chuckle, but in the middle of that verse, Lord, you have put in there, wash your hands. We need to social distance ourselves. We have told us what we need to do. Help us, Lord, to be obedient children. And while we are doing that, help us to show the kindness, the love, the joy, the patience, the generosity that you give us through the gift of the Holy Spirit so that people around us who are frightened, who are scared, will see that we are not because we have a shepherd. And may that be the very thing that will turn them to you. And Father God, I do pray for protection against our healthcare workers. Father, they are stressed to the max. They are running out of supplies. Lord, we beseech you today, meet the needs that they have. You are a great and awesome God, and you are able to do all things. And so we place each and every one of them into your hands today. In Jesus' name we pray. Until we meet again, Lord, we love you. We are so thankful that you are our shepherd. We can't thank you enough. In Jesus' name, amen.